for coming. Are you still up for learning some magic? Yeah? Okay, good. I've got some things for you, so I'll go get them, okay? Let's see, we'll grab some things and maybe just kind of set them up and then I have a surprise for you. Just open it up here and just kind of tell you a little bit about it and um, we can go through the deck together, okay? Great. Alright. Let's see. It's kind of one of those noisy ones. Your commander is Nalia the Arni Arnis Arnis. I'm not sure how to do that one, but she looks kind of cool. Let's see. Set off to the side, okay. So then you get a cute little box. So, Commander of Legends, Dungeons and Dragons, Battle for Boulder's Gate. So, and this is a black and white deck. So, um, it's a pretty good combination, or at least I think so.
Alright, so you get a really cool um, life counter in uh, Tom Commander. We have 40 health. So the the counter will start at 40 and then you can take it down for, you know, when I'm attacking you um, or if you're losing life or some abilities that you've got or whatever the case might be it's a way to kind of keep track of your life, okay? So that's really handy Otherwise, you can just use some standard dice, and I've got a pile over here that we can use, okay? So I'll let you kind of take that. Alright, so you've got a little, um, like a collector booster sample pack. The first one here looks like it is called Call to the Void for a generic mana and one black. It is a sorcery. Each player secretly chooses a creature they control and a creature they don't control. Then those choices are revealed. Destroy each creature chosen this way. Oh, that's kind of neat. I like that one. Isn't the art on there really cool? I really like the art in this game. They're all kind of unique and really beautiful. Um, the next one is a Moss Diamond. Two generic mana to cast. It's an artifact. And Moss Diamond enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add a green so Alright, so let's get down to business here. Let's see what this is. She's pretty cool. So let's see. Nalia Darn de Arnais. Born to a noble house of moderate means, Nalia was trained as a wizard from a young age. Unknown to her family, she devoted the skill of a rogue, or developed the skills of a rogue by sneaking out of her family's castle at night to mingle with the poor and downtrodden. In contrast to the typical noble of her native Amun, she harbors a deep affection for those of meager means and seeks to help them whenever she can. At times, her beliefs can border on fanaticism, as she has clashed in the past with adventuring companions whom she felt did too little to address the needs of the poor. Nalia is eager to ally with adventurers and fight to protect the weak, while Nalia's beliefs are driven by a pure heart and an honest desire to do good. Her privileged upbringing has left her somewhat naive. She sees the world in stark contrast and tends to view conflicts or problems in simple terms. She can therefore be led astray by companions who prey on her sense of justice. Yet, despite these flaws, Nalia truly cares for others. If her choice of companion leads her to take part in any wrongdoings, she makes amends and brings the victims to justice. So that's kind of neat. Um, each character has 
a backstory and it's kind of in this bigger world that you can look into so it's kind of neat that you can learn more about them so on this side it is party time a white and black deck so you'll be playing this one against me I'm playing the deck so the Forgotten Realms offer boundless rewards to bold adventurers. You want to gather a party that is ready for anything. Unfortunately, or fortunately, Nalia Diarnais is just the rogue for the job. Amp up this deck's synergies by assembling a party on the battlefield. You'll need at least one cleric, one rogue, one warrior, and a wizard to reach full strength so you'll need them, you know, a character of each of those types to create a party um, on your battlefield and once your party is in place you'll need to protect them and keep some backup members in your hand just in case the board gets swept fortunately even if a horrible catastrophe comes to pass and your current party doesn't make it out alive, you can always recast Nalia from your command zone and use her ability to rebuild from the top of your library. Carefully choose when to deploy party members, build up an army, and chip away at your opponent's life totals on the way to victory. So, let's see. And this is a nice um, little rule set too, so we'll go ahead and go over that. Commander rules. Every commander game is a freewheeling back and forth battle in which alliances are formed, friends are betrayed, and grudges are repaid with vengeance. In the end, only one player will be left standing until the next game begins. Commander is a free-for-all multiplayer game that uses additional magic rules. So you start the game with 40 life. Um, your commander starts the game in the command zone. You can cast your commander from the command zone. The commander tax makes it cost two more for each time you've previously cast it from the command zone. So that means if I um, like it, or I should say if if you killed my commander, you took him out of my uh, battlefield there, and you took him out, uh, he would not go to my graveyard because he's dead. He would then go to my command zone. But instead of getting to recast that you know, card for the same cost I originally paid, I would have to pay two more. So generic mana, so it's anything I've got, but it's two more to get them out. So just something to kind of keep in mind. Sometimes your commander won't be as easy to get out. Um, if your commander would be put into the par- or if your commander would be put into your hand or library from anywhere, you may choose to put it in the command zone instead. If your commander would be put into your graveyard or exile, it goes there as normal. The next time state-based actions are performed, if your commander is still in that zone, you may choose to put it in the command zone. So, if your commander deals 21 or more combat damage to any one player through the game, that player loses. Alright? So, just kind of some extra rules, okay? So, but let's kind of just go through your deck and we'll go over the basic rules. Okay. Hmm. And then we'll get you some sleeves for these cards too, just to kind of protect them a little bit, okay? So this one, it's a little card I really like, um, I don't know, it's just really kind of nice. 
it tells you all the different formats of magic so even if you don't like commander here um, they've got other ones that maybe you'd like a little more so if you're kind of feeling like this is kind of neat but maybe it's a bit long or something like that um, you can always fall back on some of these more uh, different ones they might be a little shorter uh, you know maybe a little more up your alley so and then the back of the card which I really like for uh, beginners it lists all of the things that you do during your turn so on your turn you will begin so you will untap all of your cards then you'll have your upkeep which it doesn't really list here but untap upkeep and then you will draw a card for turn so sometimes people will say these out loud when they're playing their games so they'll say up tap or untap uh, upkeep depending on you know, sometimes there's cards that will have a specific you know during your upkeep do this or whatever um, then you'll say draw for turn and you'll kind of keep going along with things so then you will have a main phase so you will play a land you can only play one land per turn so the land is what allows you to cast all of your cards you will then cast creatures and other spells you can cast as many as you have your you know, mana or land for so if you've got enough to cast five different cards you can do that you will then have a combat phase so you will declare your attackers uh, so you will say I'm going to attack you with this character um, and then it allows the other person to so your opponent is going to declare are they going to use any of their cards to block with or are they going to take that damage themselves and that's where this comes in you have your counter so if you decide not to block any of that damage you will then take those points off of your counter or your dice or whatever you're using and then uh <laughs> Uh, and then your life will go down you know, as it goes once you get to zero then you're done otherwise if somebody deals 21 to that player then they're done too um, usually commander will be like in a pod or a four um, you can play commander with two players too though okay which is how I usually play it so and then combat damage is dealt so sometimes there's cards that have certain abilities like um, trample where they will go uh, you know even if you've chosen to block my person with a card uh, if I kill that card any extra damage will go straight on to you um, so that's just something to keep in mind as well so and then you'll have a second main phase so you'll play a land only if you have not already and then you'll cast creatures and other spells so and then you'll have uh, an end phase so that your creatures will heal and then you pass the turn to the next person um, and then the other thing to kind of keep in mind is there are certain cards in your deck that um, you can cast at any moment so if you have an instant for instance um, it doesn't matter if it's my turn or your turn or you're in the middle of attacking or you're trying to block something and you want to stop me from doing it uh, you can cast those at any time so it's kind of nice so let's take a look at your cards so you have some token creatures some inklings so those guys are really cute I like them and on the other side you've got warriors so certain cards will require that you create a token creature um, sometimes I don't have the appropriate token creatures if I'm creating a deck I like to at least get a few of the tokens that I need you know for a specific deck so but sometimes you can just improve it kind of depends on uh, who 
who you're playing with and how much of a stickler they are for things like that. So, but I think most players are pretty, pretty casual on that kind of thing. So then you also have a token artifact treasure, and then a core warrior. And each of these kind of uh, artifacts are a little bit different. Like this one, sacrifice an artifact to add one mana of any color. So you can kind of build your deck around themes and uh, uh, you take your commander and you kind of take their abilities and you build your deck based on that. So, But don't worry about that. This is kind of already put together for you. You can modify it however you want to. So if you find you really like it, but maybe there are certain things you don't like about it, you can switch cards out. So, um, with Commander, you can only have one of each card, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. There are also Token Wizards. And then another Core Warrior on the back. And then an Angel Warrior. So, And then another Core Warrior. And then also a token shapeshifter there, and a core warrior. So, more token shapeshifters. And then on the other side, token shapeshifters. So. Okay. So you have a token artifact, which is a clue. Uh, two sacrifices artifact to draw a card. And then you have an Undercity. So this is like a dungeon card. Uh, a lot of the Boulder Skate stuff have the uh, D&D theme. So you can enter dungeons and roll dice and things like that. So you just have to follow the instructions. It's not as hard as it sounds, okay? Um, you can't enter this dungeon unless you venture into Undercity. So there's certain cards that will say, you know, you're gonna go to Undercity or enter the dungeon or whatever, so. Alright. So we have... I probably won't go over every card here with you. I'll let you kind of discover stuff, but we'll kind of go over your commander and maybe a, a few of the creatures in there, okay? So your commander is Nalia Darn Darnites. There she is. Yeah. And you can look over these a lot more closely in a minute here. So she is a legendary creature, human rogue. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast Cleric. Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard spells from the top of your library. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, so you need one of each of those characters, or creatures, um, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control of those creatures, or uh, and those creatures gain death touch until end of turn. So, this card doesn't say it, but a lot of cards, when there's like an ability like that, it will have a little um, uh, text next to it that will tell you what that means. So like for death touch, that's like, if this creature attacks, if they attack, then that other creature dies, no matter what their power is. So, so she's pretty good, I think. Kind of a nice uh, theme there. So. Let's just take a look at a few kind of key cards you might need to know about. Um, before you start. Hmm. I like that the same card, but a little thicker. Hmm. Interesting. We'll put her out to the side. So let's see. Let's find some lands. So you'll need to kind of know about those. Let's see if 
there's any uh, special lands. It's just lots of basic lands. It sure is a lot. And plains, plains. helpful. 
And then you have uh, creatures, just like your commander. Each one of them is a little different. So you want to look at your deck and the type of creatures you've got in it. You know, if you're making your own deck, you want to kind of follow that theme you've got with your commander or your planeswalker. So it's kind of nice. So there's a few other kinds of cards that I think that we should look at here. Oops, missed that guy. Great sure. Oh, he's so cute. Look at this little guy. That's just we were talking about the art, but look at him. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. So a lot of them are going to be creatures. So you want to only read that kind of bottom part, figure out what the guy does, and how you can use them with the other cards. And you'll get better at kind of uh, figuring out a game plan as you go along. So the first couple games we play are going to be um, just practice, okay? So don't worry about it. Nobody's judging you. Hmm. Sorcery. That one and an instant artifact, artifact, soul ring. Got a lot of those. Another land, more lands. Lots of lands because you can't do anything without the land. got a little small pile of um, cards that are kind of uh, different types that you could run into. So I won't go through all of them because that's going to bore you to death. So we'll leave your commander there. Okay, so we'll just go over this small little uh, pile here and then we'll get started playing. Okay, I'll kind of show you how to set up your stuff. Okay. Okay, this first one is a saga. So if you ever run into a saga, you can pay one, well for this one, you can pay one generic, you have two planes and one swamp, so two white and one black. So as this saga enters and after you draw your, uh, your draw step, you add a lore counter and sacrifice after. So you have three little steps there. One, two, three. Step one, you create a 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. Two, until end of turn, angels you control gain tap, destroy target creature when less powerless than the creature's power. Angels you control gain double strike until end of turn. And then, once your counter reaches the end step, it wants you to just discard it. So you'll have your draw pile, and then next to that you'll have a graveyard. So that's where you're going to kind of put all your cards that are, you know, not good anymore. You, they've been killed, you've used them, um, and then we'll get put into your little pile. Um, your cards can also then be exiled. That means that they are put into kind of a separate pile. Um, they're no longer able to be used unless you specifically have something that can take something out of exile. Um, but there are cards that you can cast things from your graveyard and uh, all 
kinds of stuff so just because something's in your graveyard doesn't mean it's a bad thing so just something to keep Alright, uh, this next one, I just wanted to show you uh, certain creatures have abilities that you can use And you can use these at any time, okay? So like this guy, you know, you're gonna pay your cost to cast him And then uh, you can, during your turn or pretty much at any point, you can pay one generic and one white to target permanent you control gains protection from white until end of turn so that's helpful so if somebody's trying to kill um, this guy and he's or they have a, uh, a white color as well or a white spell um, it just means that they would then have no effect so you can kind of at that point cast your instant and like oh no nope, I'm protected or no, whatever, so that's kind of things that you can do on the cards themselves okay. so this one it has a dusk side and a dawn side so it's kind of a little bit funny looking there we go so the dusk is too generic and too white you destroy all creatures with power of three or greater so that could be just a complete board wipe so and then dawn three generic two white so aftermath cast a spell only from your graveyard and then exile it so we just talked about that return all creatures with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand so you would take all those cards that have two or less power on them and just put them right back into your hand so um, you have a hand limit in uh, of seven in your hand or like as you're playing unless you specifically have a card that allows you to have more cards which there are a lot of those um, this one here uh, is a sorcery, so it's like a spell you can cast, it's not necessarily a creature. Four generic, two white, um, so like this one, it says that you can choose two. So there's like a small list of things that you can choose from. So choose to destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, Destroy all creatures with value, a uh, mana value 3 or less And destroy all creatures with mana value 4 or greater So, this could be a very powerful card, I think That's a good one Black Market Connections is an enchantment So again, it's kind of like a spell as well um, At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase so you have main phase combat then another main phase so it's talking about that first one um, you will choose one or more so you sell contraband create a treasure token and lose one life or um, you buy information draw a card you lose two life hire a mercenary create a three two colorless shapeshifter token with change link and you lose three life. It has every creature type. So that's kind of a neat card. Again, you just cast that along with your other uh, creatures or whatever. So we already did that. And then you also have artifacts. So um, the sorceries and enchantments, you usually cast them and then they'll kind of go right into your but like the artifacts, they will just stay on your field, kind of like a creature, but they can't attack or anything So like this one, Talisman of Hierarchy, it is an artifact, you can tap to add one colorless mana Or tap to add one white and one black 
Talisman of Hierarchy deals one damage to you if you tap the mana, so kind of neat. But this will just stay on your battlefield unless somebody destroys it. Alright, Soul Ring. Oops, that's another artifact. We just did one of those. And then there's also an artifact equipment. So this is kind of neat. Uh, you'll pay to cast your artifact equipment. This looks like this guy. And then equipped creature gets a plus one and then minus one. So whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards. So you would cast this spell, but then you also have to cast or pay one more to attach it to a creature. So it's like armor. You already, and then an instant. So, an instant you can cast at any time. You can cast it during my turn, your turn, whenever you want. It's exactly as it says, it's an instant. It happens immediately. So, this one's called Despark, and it is one white and one black. Exile target permanent with mana a four or greater. Liliana whispered to whatever consciousness Oketra and Bantu had left. You are the gods. He is the usurper. You know what to do. <laughs> so anytime you want to cast it, but it's a one-time use, so you cast it, it goes into your graveyard. So yeah, we kind of talked about that too. And then the background. Um, I don't think you or Commander is a background kind of guy, but there's a um a legendary enchantment background. It's a folk hero. So Commander creatures you own have. Whenever you cast a spell that shares a creature type with this creature, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Tales of your great deeds follow you no matter how far you travel from your hometown. So some commanders allow like a, a background commander or like a secondary card almost. Um, so that's kind of what those can be used for. Yeah, we talked about those guys. So, so that's kind of a real basic overview. So you'll have your you'll have your commander. Your commander will go kind of in your right corner there. You'll have your draw pile. You'll shuffle really, really well. Uh, sometimes your opponent will want to like cut your deck, so you'll it or they don't have to, but they can. Um, so you can allow them to do that if you want. The hand size is seven, so we'll draw seven cards. Um, I like to have at least three mana when I draw, um, otherwise I won't mulligan. <laughs> so when that happens, you'll draw, you'll put those other cards, you'll reshuffle, and you'll grab only six cards. So it's a little bit of a trade off. Um, I find that I don't do very well when I have two or less mana, um, but you know that's a risk. If you want to try it, definitely. I've tried it before and done really well, so it depends. Um, so then you'll have your battlefield, which will be in front of you, so you're going to lay out all your cards and your artifacts, you know, anything that you've cast, and then you'll have kind of a bottom area that you're going to stack up your mana. Okay, so one mana per turn, and again, you've got your little card, so you can go ahead and use this for each turn, and I'm going to help you through, okay, so. Alright, do you have any questions before we start? No, that's okay. I think we'll just kind of take it as it's going, uh, we'll set you up, and then we'll take it one step at a time. I'll help you through. And I'm no expert either, so don't worry. We'll just kind of work through it. 